we're looking at a rocky bluff near the area the Navajo call the center of the world. How important is it for you to get that museum built up there? Very important, not just to me, but to the 400 plus who serve, were certified as Navajo code talkers. There's three of us still alive. We want to see that museum put up before we are gone. Navajo code talkers, young Marine volunteers whose language was invaluable to the Corps in World War II. Each division had at least 80 Navajo code talkers. That enemy would not understand, will never understand what in the world is being planned. Among them, 94-year-old Peter McDonald, who lied about his age and enlisted at 15. In the thick of the action on island assault after island assault, the Navajo code talkers radioed back critical information in their native tongue. We never knew there was such a thing as tanks or battleship, cruisers, destroyer, aircraft carrier. So we named those differently than any other thing, like a battleship, thoughts of big fish. Big fish. <laughs> aircraft carrier. Chidi neg, yeah. One that carry birds around. <laughs> this looks like you in uniform in your Marine Corps uniform, yeah. right? Ingenious. Yeah. The code, unbreakable, but was at first rejected by Marine top brass. Commandant also said, we don't know Navajo. We don't know who they are. Mm. They may not qualify for to be, to be a Marine. And we don't want anyone wearing the United States Marine Corps uniform that might embarrass this proud organization. So forget it. But after a test? It is said, we don't understand it either, but it works. <laughs> <laughs> Send us some more Navajos. Navajos who'd been forced to attend strict boarding schools, whose purpose was to strip them of their heritage, their spirit. You went to Indian school when you were small, and did they punish you for speaking your language? Absolutely. I went to Shiprock boarding school run by the Bureau of Indian Affairs. I was nine years old when I was put in boarding school. And uh, as soon as we enter the gate, they tell us in this compound, it's a fenced in boarding school, you just talk English, you don't speak Navajo. If you speak Navajo, you get punished. The Code Talker's success, a yes. cruel paradox, Peter's daughter, Charity. It's very moving because it has a lot to do with the culture. What they fought with was our culture. What they fought with was our language. The lore, their stories passed from generation to generation, a tradition still unbroken. To understand who we are, why, how we have our freedom, liberty, and peace that we all enjoy. That's the future, unbroken. Unbroken code, unbroken future. For the most part, their story was not told for many, many years. So it's such a relief, you know, to know that the legacy is going to live on. This is going to be the, uh, the gateway to the Navajo Code Talker Museum. Regan Hawthorne's father, the late Roy Hawthorne Sr., was also a code talker. Now this hero son is doing everything he can to make the museum a reality. His chapter might be closed, but taking up that mantle, and not just me, but others, our generation, the descendants, the sons, the daughters, it's incumbent upon us to tell the story. If we, our generation, let this opportunity slip by without building that monument, that museum, that storytelling institution, then it'll be gone. Last week, the museum officially broke ground with ceremony, song, and golden shovels. The Navajo have collected a tiny fraction of the museum's projected costs. But Mr. McDonald says it is important to keep the remarkable story alive for the Navajo Nation and for the rest of us. You know, America is a diverse community. 
we are made of all different nationality, different language, different skills, different talents. When it comes to saving America, saving the liberty and peace that we enjoy, we need to use all of those talents that we all possess. Harry Smith, NBC News, Say Bonito, New Mexico. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.